Yo, what to do, YouTube? It's your boy, Coach Shock. We are back with another video, and today we are going to be talking about training camp with pads for the Colts. It did just transpire on Tuesday, and I heard some good raves about the Colts defense. The Colts defense had Matt Ryan in shambles from what I heard, and that's always a bonus of what you will want to hear from the Colts, especially from the defensive side, because we know how the defense played last year. They shown flashes, but they wasn't consistent. And now, with the pads on, you know, before the pads, the Colts offense in camp definitely had the advantage, in my opinion, personally. Of course, we've seen Isaiah Rodgers. But, you know, other than that, you know, we've seen Gilmore. But other than that, personally, I feel like we've seen flashes of Yannick as well. But personally, I feel like the offense had the upper hand without the pads in camp. Of course, we're not, we're not overreacting to the camp. But we're hearing good re reviews about the defense showing up and, you know, causing a hard time for Matt Ryan in camp with the pads on is definitely a boost of morale moving forward, going towards the season for Colts fans because this is what we want. We want a complete team going into next season because we got some goals and we got some plans. This is what we want. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Shout out to Indy Star Joe. Uh, this is what I'm reading from, basically the article uh, that they put up on IndyStar.com. Check it out. They got more info. I'm not going to spill all of it because I want you guys to go read it yourselves. But let's go ahead and hop into it. Just going to be a brief uh, so the first day of full pads arrived at the park, and the Colts defense did most of the thumping. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts secondary has drawn rave reviews from the Colts coaching staff. Uh, Matt Ryan threw an incomplete on his first four attempts in 7-on-7 seven seven inside the red zone. Uh, at least two broken up plays, but finished 7 from 11 in full team drills, all while taking pressure throughout. So Matt Ryan was struggling, but at, overall he did a pretty solid job. Uh, on the full 11 on 11 contact, applying pressure, all them things, sacks, all the stuff you want with the pads on. Matt Ryan had himself a good camp day, uh, but in the red zone and everything, the defense played lights out, and that's what you want to hear because we, if we get a red zone, we want the we want the coast defense to step up if they get drawn down there. We want them to step up, and seeing this, you know, getting in Matt Ryan's head down there in the red zone is a good sign. Moving forward, even in the one on one drills, the quarterback and receivers have a difficult. Time racking up completions. Ryan would likely get sacked at least twice. The first combination was Grover to Yannick. This is good to hear from Grover because we had questions going into Grover Stewart going into this season. How he's going to fit in this scheme and how is he going to produce. So this is good. Grover and Yannick. Second time was Bobby Okereke when Ryan rolled out of the pocket. Nice. Court, uh, Nick Foles had a little bit more success finishing 8 of 11 in full team. That's nice. Ben Bettigo got a sack. Nice. Uh, Frank Wright put uh, suicides on the line between offense and defense from the final three plays. Each of the practices, the defense won two out of the three chances. Um, moving forward, Okereke and running mate Zaire Franklin was monstrous throughout the day. Okereke had a sack and had laid a physical hit on Big Mo to break up what looked like a for sure touchdown. Nice. And made several plays. Franklin had his part. He flashed with a flash breakup and a couple of nice plays in the running game, including a flying hit on the heen hands on the outside. Hmm. And Gakwe was a menace in training camp. For sure, we know that already. Uh, one play that was a beautiful move by Michael Pittman Jr. when he pump faked for uh, when he uh, and a perfect pump fake for Matt Ryan fooled Brandon Fashion badly, and Michael Pittman Jr. got free for a game for 40 yards. You guys probably seen that clip on Twitter. Uh, Hines showcased his speed on the outside most of the times. That's pretty good. And Foles made several tight window throws in the red zone, hitting Ashton Doolin and Kiki Kuti without much space to work with. That's also nice to hear. Uh, we talked about Jack Cohn, Nicola Canick, uh, best wide receiver or tight end, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Elegant found Isaiah Ford. Isaiah Ford been having a really good camp. I hope Isaiah Ford makes the roster because with all the production he had in camp, it would be upsetting for him not to make the roster at the end. It would be very upsetting. And I think he could make a potential splash going into next season in a few key games that we might need a guy like Isaiah Ford who had a good camp. So my credit and support is going to Isaiah Ford to make the roster. Moving forward, but most of the part, the defense won the day. It's usually the case for the first day in pass. Coach Frank Reich said we did a lot in the red zone today. And when you get in training camp, we're typically just installing plays on offense and typically in the red zone. You are very specific about how you game plan teams. We're not game planning our defense. They have some things covered up. Nice. Field goal fight. Nobody cares about field goals really. Hot rod. Give it to them. Uh, but, of course, they said the backup, uh, Jake. Jake Verdi. He said him and Hot Rod had a, a battle. 
33, 40 yards, 46, and 52. Okay, interesting. If you guys want to read about that, you guys can read about it. Uh, give it to Specs. I really don't care what happens after that. Um, Alec Pierce was matched up against Stephon Gilmore. I did mention how Gilmore is probably going to be locked up on Pierce. I got told otherwise, but it is what it is at the end of the day. Gilmore broke up Ryan's throw to Pierce during the period, but at development, the party was due to the veteran savvy in part because of two misreads where the ball should go on both of the snaps. Pierce got free behind Gilmore only to see the ball go elsewhere. Mm, miscommunication. Ryan, who diligently worked with the receivers throughout training camp, went over the rookie and both to help Pierce understand how the route needs to be run. Mm-hmm. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Jojo Domon broke up a pass and made an impressive tackle on Philip Lindsay. I heard Philip Lindsay had a good day as well. Sterling Weather, uh, Weatherford, he leaped high to knock away an elegant throw in the red zone. Uh, injury report, Dennis Kelly. Uh, he's evaluating a knee injury. Uh, John Hurst's ankle and Carter O'Donnell is undisclosed. Uh, Rodney McCloy, Tyquan Lewis, and Eric Johnson was all practicing. That's good to hear. Wally Cox, who tweaked his knee, was able to return for participation. That's good to hear. Shakir Leonard back. Uh, Michael Strawn knee remained physically unable to perform list. Chris Williams is still out with a boot on his foot. Hmm. Interesting. Curtis Brooks has some success with lateral quickness. Chris Wilcox, a player of the coast, picked up on the wave of wide cut deadline last season, has a nine. Has a, had a nice pass breakup for the second consecutive practice. Nice. Uh, Marcel Dabo picked off Elegant in the red zone during seven-on-seven seven drills. Like I said, I'm not going to read all of it because I want you guys to go check it out if you want more information on the training camp. But I appreciate Indy Star, Joel, all of them doing amazing work over there. Check out IndyStar.com for more information. Uh, but like I said, that is a pretty exciting news to hear that the defense had a very good camp day with the pads. Like you said, Coach Frank Wright said he's used to it, but whatever, we're not trying to hear that. We want to hear how good the defense is doing. Breakdown by breakdown, snap by snap, consistency leading into the regular season so we can go ahead and do the goals that we have planned for the Colts. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section, everything all about it. Uh, this is Marcus, and until next time, you've been Culture Shot.